Praise God. Praise I was thinking about going a different direction, but I think I'll go this way. And uh, we want to turn to the Word of God, and I know I didn't give any scriptures to Timmy there. Missed it. Sorry, brother. <laughs> never thought of it. Never even entered my mind. Kind of on short notice here, a little bit of a leash here, so <laughs> that's all right, though. Praise God. And we want to turn to the book of Hebrews in the fourth chapter, and uh, verses 12 through to 16. And I uh, want to read uh, verses 12 through to 16 of the fourth chapter of Hebrews. For the word of God is quick, that means alive, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sunder of soul and of spirit and of joints and of marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Neither is, any, is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes with whom we have to do. Seeing then we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need." Uh, for a few moments tonight, with the help of the Lord, I'd like to speak on the subject and teach or preach whatever the Lord would have this to be, that Jesus is a personal God. Let's reach out to the Lord, invite his presence to overshadow us once again tonight. Lord Jesus, we love you today, God. We're so thankful, my God, to be in your house and your presence. And Lord Jesus, I pray, God, with your people of like precious faith. And Lord, we pray, God, that you give us something from the word of God that would help us and strengthen us, God. And Lord, help us, God, to put our trust in you, Jesus, and our confidence in you, Jesus, even when we don't understand. Lord Jesus, help us to rest upon your mercies and grace. And Lord, I pray, God, that you be our are all in all, God, every day, God. And Lord, we want to spend time in your presence, in your word. And Lord Jesus, and to be quickened, God, I pray by the power of your might and in the inner man, Lord Jesus. And every hand upon us, God, we give you praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise God. And you may be seated tonight. want to fire up the cordless. Thank you very much. So we want to talk a little bit about God and his uh, relationship with his people. And um, I know there was some mention tonight about in the testimonies uh, about the end times and talking about events that are taking place. And, and I, I honestly think that uh, sometimes we, we can look at things and situations are going to get bad. And they definitely will. And because we are living in the end times. But uh, even though all these things are taking place, we need to keep our eyes and our focus upon the one who has everything in control. Praise God. And sometimes we can get uh, discombobulated, if that's a word even, uh, when we begin to look at all the things that's going on. <laughs> you know, we get out of sync. We get out of, uh, because we don't understand what's happening. Why is the weather like this? Why are the people like this? Why are events happen like this? Why are all kinds of uh, things being told about people that may or may not be true? And why are all these things taking place? And we can have all these questions and, and our, enter into our mind. But there's one thing that we need to do, I believe, in this day and generation, and that is to focus upon the word of God. Because heaven and earth shall pass away. But God said, my word will never pass away. Hallelujah. And that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, there's a song that I, I, I like and I hear it. Uh, sometimes I'll play it and put it on, on my computer playing uh, with the little uh, MP3 files. And I'll play all these different music. And... Uh, it's one of the Gaither songs that said, I'm going to turn off the sounds that would drag men down to the pit of despondency. And so I'm going to sing. <laughs> There's sometimes you just need to get alone with God and start worshiping God. There's sometimes you just got to push aside every, all the thoughts and the world and the, all the, the, uh, 
uh, noise, if you would, of that's happening, of things going on in the world. You just need to shut yourself in with God. We sung that song tonight, shut in with God in a secret place. <laughs> there in the spirit, beholding his face, gaining more power to run in life's race. How I long to be shut in with God. And, and there are times that we need to do that. We need to recharge our batteries. We need to plug into the source, if you would, and, and just connect ourselves to the presence of God and absorb uh, the Word of God, to meditate upon the Word and, and let that Word get in us until we begin to think like the Word and we begin to uh, feel like the Word and have respond in that manner to the situations uh, of life. And uh, as we need to shut ourselves in with God, and so it's very, very good, and that we need to, uh, we need to be like that. There's another song that says that He's as close as the mention of His name. Jesus, Jesus, just to breathe the name of Jesus turns everything all around, and He's just as close as the mention of His name. And I, I don't know if we've sung that song in a while or if we have here at all. But uh, there's so much truth contained within those words that he's as close as the mention of his name. Um, because we're going to walk through situations and we're going to go through things in this life uh, that we really need God to be with us. We really need God to walk with us and to give us instruction and wisdom and understanding. Praise God. And that's what I'm talking about tonight is that we need God to be a personal God. Not a God that is afar off, but one that is close, says the mention of his name. And the scripture teaches us and lets us to know that God is a personal God. And he longs to walk with his people. We think back in the Garden of Eden with uh, Adam and Eve, how that uh, the Bible says that God came and walked with Adam and they talked in the cool of the day. And God would come and commune with them because, see, God wanted to be part of their life. He wanted to be uh, them to commune with Him and to talk with Him and walk with Him. And it was also in one of those occasions, of course, we read in the Scriptures uh, uh, where coming to commune with Adam and Eve that He found that they had disobeyed the Word and ate of the tree of, uh, of good and knowledge of good and of evil. Uh, but we find that uh, even though the, the communion was broken back then between mankind and his creation, God longed to restore that communication and that he longed to restore that walk with his creation and so he could walk with them and talk with them and that he could be our God and that he could, and we could be his people. Uh, God longed to restore that relationship that had been broken back in the Garden of Eden then. And I know some people, they like to portray that, that uh, apple that was in the Garden of Eden as being uh, depicted in artist conceptions, you know, as an apple. Uh, but I don't believe it was an apple. I really don't know what it looked like, and the Bible doesn't give us any indication. Uh, but it was the knowledge of tree and a, of knowledge of good and of evil. But I guess that part is really irrelevant. The whole main uh, thrust of the story is that uh, God wants to walk with us, and that God wants us to be in communion with Him. God wants to restore the relationship that was broken and uh, cause us to be able to walk with Him so He can be our personal God. And so we find in that scripture we, that we read, we find that God and Jesus uh, was uh, the, as the great mediator, and the high priest was touched with their feelings and concerns. You know, God is not an impersonal God. And uh, God is not a God that's way up in heaven somewhere, you know, and He doesn't really care what's going on on the earth. Uh, that's not the way that God is. God is actually close and very real and very present to each and every need. Um, and I believe uh, that God cries. And we know that from the Scriptures that even in, when Jesus, in looking at at when Lazarus had, uh, had passed away, and the Bible says the shortest verse in the Bible, that Jesus wept, uh, that God is touched with our feelings and our, our concerns and our hurts and our problems. Um, he is not an impersonal God, but rather He is close as the mention of His name. In Hebrews 4 and verse 15 and 16, uh, uh, one of the scriptures, a couple of the scripture verses that I read from my text tonight, 
It says, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched um, with the feeling of our infirmities, um, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. He did not yield to any temptation, but he overcame it by the word of God. And and he answered the devil's uh, temptations with the words, it is written, it is written, it is written. And so he overcame and he was uh, conquered, uh, the, the devil, the flesh, and the world. But the Bible goes on in the next verse, in verse 16, and it says, uh, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, uh, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help um, in the time of need. Uh, See, God wants us to come to Him with our problems. God wants us to come to Him with our needs. He wants us to run into His throne room as a child would to its father and cry out and say, i got a need. I need you to help me. And I don't know what to do. And God delights in being able to assist with this and to help His children and His people. And so the Bible admonishes us. It says, let us therefore come boldly boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help um, in the time of need. Um, See, Jesus is concerned, and that's the picture I want to paint tonight, um, that Jesus is concerned about us. He cares about our feelings and our fears and our tears. Um, And there's a song that goes, a very beautiful song, and, and it said, tears are a language that God understands. He very much understands the hurts and the pain. He very much understands the problems that we go through. And he does and is concerned uh, for those problems. Um, even though one cannot always sense the nearness of his presence. And, and there is the times that you can't feel God like you want to feel God. And uh, in fact, the scripture says that God is a God that hides himself. And why does he do that? Sometimes you can't feel his presence near uh, and you think, well, I don't know whether God's here or not because I'm going through this and I, I can't feel him. I can't sense the nearness of his presence. Uh, but he's as close then as he ever was because he's as close as the mention of his name. And even though we may not be able to feel him uh, or sense his nearness, uh, we know that he is there because the word of God says, I will never leave thee. I will never forsake thee. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the age. (laughs) Praise God. We can have a strong confidence in God and understand that because He is near, because the Word of God says that He is, uh, that even if I don't feel His presence, uh, and even if I don't feel His nearness, uh, we know that He's here because the Word of God says He is. Praise God. Can I hear an amen tonight in the house? Praise God. Hallelujah. And uh, so we will go through these times of dryness, dry spells, if you would, and seasons when we can't feel his presence near. In Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, in verse 23, the scripture says, Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places um, that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? Praise God. So even if we do not feel Him near, we can know that because He does fill heaven and earth, praise God, that He is near to us. Praise God. I'm trying to encourage somebody tonight because maybe there's somebody here tonight that you've gone through a dry spell and you can't feel the nearness of God anymore. And you feel like you're, you're going through and wonder if God is even listening to your prayers. And, and there's been times that I've thought that myself and and, you know, wondered, you know, if, is God really handy? Is he really near? Does he really understand what I'm going through in the battle? And then I pray a prayer, and God answers it, just bang, like a miracle. I, wow, I mean, uh, God, I couldn't even feel your presence close, and, and I just asked, and you did. <laughs> so <laughs> praise God, hallelujah, <laughs> that even it's not by feelings, see, we don't walk by our feelings, uh, but we walk by faith in the Word of God because we understand that the Word of God is yes and amen. Uh, it is real. It is solid. It is something you can stand upon. In uh, Job, and going through his times of trouble, 
See, he, he felt that God forgot all about him, that God didn't even know her where he was. So in his distress, uh, in Job 23 and verse 3, he said, Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might even come to his seat, uh, where I knew if I could only find where God was, I would run into uh, before him and plead my case. Um, so Job basically was saying, if I just knew where he was, I'd run in there up to his office and right to his desk, and I'd plead uh, my case before the Lord. And, and see, it was a summary of what Job was feeling uh, while he was in the greatest trial of his life. Um, where is he? Why can't I feel him? Um, and uh, why is he not helping me right now? And see, Job got to a place where he went through a lot of shades of emotion, a lot of different feelings, and he pouted, he fussed, he fumed. Uh, but God was there all the time. Just because he couldn't sense him physically with his presence and in, his, in himself, that he knew that he was there, but yet he knew God and was concerned about him, even in the midst of his trial. See, uh, I can identify with Job. There's many times that I've felt this way many times. And I'm sure there are many here of you tonight, if you were to raise your hand, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, that there's many here under, under the sounding of my voice, if you were to testify, that you could relate to what Job was talking about in the, the book of Job, uh, of what he went through. But see, Job gained strength in his troubles um, and all that he went through. And it, it came to a point in Job 13 and verse 15. Um, he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Um, but I will maintain my own ways before him. Even though he was going through some problems. Even though he's going through some struggles. Um, Job had made up his mind. Uh, that though God slay me, yet I'm going to trust him. Um, Though God take away my life from this earth, uh, yet I'm going to walk with him. Uh, I'm going to maintain my integrity before him. Um, and I'm going to be faithful to the God that created me. I'm going to be faithful to the hand of the master that formed me as a potter did the clay. And I'm going to walk with, with my God. Uh, there's a poem that I've read, and I'm sure that most here were familiar with it. Uh, it's called Footsteps. How many of you have read that? I see many hands, and you see it in all different forms. You see it in posters. You see it in bump, uh, not in bumper stickers, a little big for that, but, but you see it in posters, and you see it in pictures you put, put on your wall. And it simply goes like this, and I'm just going to re read it again just for the sake of uh, highlighting some things. It says, one night a man had a dream, and he dreamed he was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the sky flashed the scenes from his life. For each scene he noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to him and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of his life flashed before him, he noticed back at the footprints in the sand. And he noticed that many times along the path of his life, there was only one set of footprints. He also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and the very saddest times in his life. And this really bothered him. And he questioned the Lord about it. And the Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the most troublesome times in my life, there was only one set of footprints. And I don't understand why. <laughs> When I needed you the most, you would leave me. And the Lord replied, my precious, precious child, I love you and would never leave you. During those times of your trial and suffering, uh, when you see only one set of footprints, that's when I carried you. It's so wonderful that uh, this story or this poem uh, what it depicts is that we thought God wasn't around or cared, but it, during these times, God was carrying us. He was holding us close, and He was carrying us through the problems. So there was a man that preached a message one time. Brother Rick Stewart's gone on to be with the Lord now. He said, don't let trouble trouble you. 
But many times, being human, we do let trouble trouble us. And sometimes uh, uh, we uh, do feel troubled by things going on. But that's the time when Jesus wants us to know that He is near. He is close. And He's just as close as the mention of His name. All we've got to do is breathe the name of Jesus and turns everything all around. And because that name is above every other name, there is no other name like the name of Jesus. Praise God. The things in heaven, the things upon earth, uh, and things underneath the earth all need to bow down below before the name of Jesus Christ. They all must bow. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord of all. In uh, Matthew, the 18th chapter, Jesus made the promise of being close and near to his disciples, his children, And in Matthew 18, verse 20, Jesus said, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Praise God. The God of the universe, think about it for a minute. The God of the universe, huge. He runs the whole world and the whole universe and all the solar systems, all the planets rotating and spinning in perfect timing, uh, more intricate than any watch design that a, that a watchmaker could make and put together. Yet God spanned this universe and controls it all. Yet He takes time out from His schedule of running the universe to come down and to commune with us and to talk with us and walk with us. What a wonderful God that He is. Where two or three are gathered together in the midst of them, there. Uh, together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. See, his promise was that he would always be there. In Matthew 28 and verse 20, Lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world, uh, was the cry that Jesus made throughout the whole gospel message. Uh, God said he would be the God at hand and that the children of the earth were his offspring. Uh, That is why he created mankind in the image of God, made he them uh, We are created in the image of the Lord Himself. Um, And in Acts 17 and verse 26, um, And He hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell upon the face of the earth, um, and hath determined the times of their before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. So God has got everything in control. Praise God. Hallelujah. When we think that uh, things are not in His control, Uh, It is under His control, and we will see it come to pass. Um, uh, We find that in the Scriptures, in Acts 17, verses 27 to 29, um, its Scripture makes us know in in Paul, in preaching his his, uh, sermon to the uh, people of the unknown God, the Athenians, on the the mountain, I believe it was. And he quotes from one of the poets. And in Acts 17, verses 27 to 29... um, The Scripture says, and that they should seek the Lord, uh, uh, lest, uh, uh, if haply, they should might feel after Him and find Him, though He be not far from every one of us. See, Paul was referring to this because of the truth that was in it, uh, that God is close, but we need to seek Him. We need to search for Him. We need to long after Him. We need to press forward toward Him. um, and he goes on and, and continues in uh, verse 28, For in Him we live and we move and we have our being, um, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we also are His offspring. Um, for so much then we are, the offs- we are the offspring of God. We ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver uh, or stone graven by man's art or by man's device. Um, For in Him we live and move and have our being. Praise God. Hallelujah. Of course, Paul was referring to the children of the earth being God's by creation. But see, we must also realize um, that we must become His by new birth. Um, It is not enough to be born into this world and be His by creation. Because as Adam created and our great ancestors uh, were created by God and we come down through generations and generations, uh, but we must be born again. Uh, We must receive a new nature from heaven uh, and be changed on the inside by new birth experience, born of the water and of the Spirit. Uh, And when somebody is born again, um, 
They are not just gods just by creation, but now they're also by regeneration of the Holy Ghost. Um, Praise God. Can I hear an amen tonight? Hallelujah. Praise God. But how much closer one draws to God is determined by the cry of their hearts in prayer. In James 4 and verse 8, the scripture says, Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. We must consciously make an effort to to be close to God, to spend time with him in prayer, uh, to study the word of God, uh, and to seek to obey the scriptures and obey the word of God. And and, uh, this is what the scripture is talking about here. This is why the admonition is given to draw nigh unto God in Romans 10 and verse 13 when it says, um, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Um, Of course, Paul was not advocating some kind of easy believism doctrine or anything like that, but he was pointing the way towards drawing closer to God. He is near and wants to be invited to draw close, even closer. And we invite God into our lives through prayer. When you pray to Him in the mornings, and many times we find throughout the Scriptures, uh, the apostles, the prophets, and, and the disciples, they would pray in the morning, and they would be up early. In fact, David said, early will I seek thee in the Scriptures. Why? Because of the pressures that come upon him during life and, and during the day, he had to find that time alone with God and to spend it in, in the time with prayer and seeking uh, the face of the Lord. And he had to reach out to him um, and, uh, in prayer because God responds to prayer and he's as close as the mention of his name. There's another song, uh, Nicole C. Mullen, I think, When I Call on Jesus, All Things Are Possible. I can mount up with wings of eagles and fly when you call on Jesus and you spend time with him. uh, Praise God. And that's what I'm talking about tonight, a personal God, a personal relationship um, with God. And I believe that a personal relationship and spending time with the Lord like this is the answer to a lot of the problems that we go through. Because many times we get ourselves into our own trouble. Okay, I'm pointing, but I've got three fingers pointing back. I know I do that. Anybody else willing to admit they do? (laughs) Get yourself in your own trouble sometimes? (laughs) Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, But that's why we need to seek him. That's why we need his help. That's why we need his wisdom. Uh, We find uh, that God came close to Paul in, in all of his journeys, even though Paul may have not thought so, because in Acts 18, chapter verses 9, 10, 11, Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. He said, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. And he continued there a year, six months, uh, teaching uh, the word of the Lord among them. And uh, Paul didn't realize God was near him, but God said, I'm with you. And I'm here with you, and I have much people in this place. And when Peter followed the Lord from afar off, he, got, he had run into some problems. <laughs> but see, God wants intimacy with his people. He wants that relationship and that companionship. Uh, and he'll knock at the door of each heart, and he waits for an invitation to come in. Uh, uh, Jeremiah, the second chapter, verse 32 The scripture says, can a maid uh, forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgot me days without number. It was a sad commentary for Israel during that time in their history. And uh, that the people of God and in the Old Testament, uh, because God wanted them to run to him as a a child would run to its father. And uh, there's a song I heard one time, and actually I heard it in, in Chinese and Mandarin one time, and also in English. Uh, and it talks about running to the Lord. And, Lord, I depend upon you. Just like a child reaching out to his father and mother, Lord, I depend upon you. And uh, we do depend upon him every day. And we need his help um, because God desires intimacy. Jesus wants to have a relationship with us on a daily basis. Um, Uh, In John 20 and verse 26, we find, uh, I just want to touch on a man by the name of Thomas. Of course, 
most of us here, we, we hear talk about Thomas. He's called Doubting Thomas, you know, he, he doubted God, you know. But I want to take a little different snapshot of him just for a couple moments here. In John 20 and verse 26 and 27, and after eight days again when his disciples were within, Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, and the doors being shut, stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach thither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach thither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. Be not faithless, but believing. See, Thomas wasn't there the first time that Jesus appeared to the apostles and disciples. He wasn't there when Jesus appeared. And it wasn't that Thomas doubted, and that he he may have, he just wanted to make sure. He wanted proof that Jesus, uh, of his resurrection and ascension. And you know, Jesus never ever, ever had a problem with that. He never ever, ever had a problem. And when he appeared again this time, Thomas was there. And he said, Thomas, take a look. See my hands? Look at the scars where, the, where the, his hands were driven. The spikes have been driven through his hands. And he said, look at, reach your hand out, touch the scar on my side. He said, and be not faithless, but believing. He admonished Thomas. Uh, but see, Thomas just wanted to uh, be sure. He wanted proof uh, because they had, he had seen uh, them take Jesus and crucify and kill Jesus. And he just wanted to make absolutely sure that w- this was for real. Hmm. Praise God. But you notice the interesting thing here. We notice the last few verses, that verse I read in 27, how that Jesus came back to the disciples just for Thomas. (laughs) He came back just so Thomas could look and see the, the wounds in his hands and see the scar in his side. That Thomas could see these things just for one disciple. Jesus came back to them. And Jesus uh, never had to do this for some of the other ones, but just one person, Thomas. But see, one person with God is as important as a hundred people. That's how much that Jesus cares. He doesn't want anyone left behind. And no one is overlooked. But every child is precious as, as an important to God. And as we stand together tonight, we could all stand together. Every person is important to God. Thomas's response to Jesus' personal approach removed all doubt from his mind. Jesus had appeared to the 500. There was over 500 that watched Jesus ascend back up in heaven. A cloud received him out of sight. There was over 500 people. That's a major historical event according to, to history. And, uh, but Thomas was one person, only one. He came back for the one. And Thomas's response to Jesus' personal approach removed all doubt from his mind. Praise God. Because we find in John 28, 20, uh, chapter 20 and verse 28, Then Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Wow. (laughs) See, Thomas just wanted to make sure. He wasn't doubting Thomas. He wanted just to be sure it was for real. (laughs) And Jesus came back to him just for that reason, and he said, My Lord and my God. A personal God. See, God wants a personal walk with you like that. He wants you to understand that he's concerned about your life. He's concerned with what's happening in your world, in your circle. He, he wants you to understand that because Jesus, at that point, became Thomas's personal God. My Lord and my God. Hallelujah. And Jesus wants to become your personal God today. If you were just uh, the only one left on the earth, Jesus will come back just for you.
you had been the only one that needed salvation, Jesus would have come down, walked on the earth, his earthly ministry, was crucified, buried, and resurrected just for you and just for me, just for that one individual. And as we open up these altars tonight, why don't we come up and find a place to just raise our hands or just stand in the presence of God and reach out to the Lord tonight. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. This I know because the Bible tells us so. He's my Lord.